Here we go! What's up, y'all? This is GamerBlake90, proud chief of the Blue Blur, with another Sonic News video. The last two weeks sure went by in a flash, didn't they? But when you're a Sonic fan, that's par for the course. Unless you're playing Secret Rings, in which case you can bend time to your will, but, uh, let's stay on track here. Anyway, it feels like the Sonic Central Direct happened only yesterday, and yet, here we are, less than a week away from two of the biggest summertime events of the year. The Summer Game Fest and E3 both of which are set to occur virtually this year. This also means they'll be free to attend, so people, go crazy! Now for the sake of keeping things simple, we'll just focus on one event that's coming up, and that's the Summer Game Fest. That one's gonna be happening before E3 does, specifically this Thursday, June 10th. And the Summer Game Fest has been organized by the very same people that bring you the Game Awards annually. You can look forward to watching this event, on the Twitch and YouTube channels for the Game Awards, or you can go to the home site, SummerGameFest.com, and watch it there. Plenty of options to choose from, so just pick the one you're comfortable with. Before the Sonic Central Direct wrapped up, it was implied that there would be more Sonic announcements coming throughout the year. With Sega having been locked in for both the Summer Game Fest and E3, which were two weeks away at the time their first Sonic Central happened, it was only logical to assume that more Sonic-related news were within reach. And then just yesterday, the team behind Summer Game Fest posted a trailer that confirmed our suspicions. If you skip directly to the one minute mark in the trailer, you catch a very brief glimpse of the opening cutscene from the recently announced Sonic Colors Ultimate, which is coming out this September. Now, we already knew that Sonic would have a presence at the Summer Game Fest, as it was stated during Sonic Central that we would get a preview of the upcoming Sonic Symphony, which is happening on the Blue Blur's birthday, June 23rd. Looks like Sonic and I will get to be the same age for like a month before I turn a year older than him again. God help me. But yeah, in a little over two weeks, we'll be celebrating Sonic's birthday by being treated to orchestrated compositions of his music library. We'll also get treated to performances from Crush 40, the signature rock band that has brought us countless memorable pieces of Sonic soundtrack. If I don't hear either Open Your Heart or Live and Learn when this concert happens, boy, we're gonna have to talk. But I think the more likely scenario is that they'll choose a library of songs encompassing as many of the Sonic games as possible. So at best, you can probably expect one piece of music per game, maybe two if the occasion warrants it, but ultimately, we don't know what the lineup will be yet. I can tell you right now though, that fans of Sonic Mania can look forward to an orchestrated composition of the Studiopolis theme. If you've been paying attention during Sonic Central, you actually hear the Studiopolis theme being played when the Sonic Symphony comes up. So, yeah, something to look forward to. Another guess I would dare to make, although this isn't too much of a guess, is that Green Hill Zone will be featured among the orchestrated compositions as well. Because come on, that's Sonic's origin point. How could you not include that? And yeah, yeah, I know we've all gotten tired of playing through the Green Hill Zone so much within the last few years, but you cannot deny its significance to Sonic's history. Plus, I don't think we ever heard an orchestrated remix of Green Hill, have we? Well, I haven't. If y'all have, point me towards it. But the event is called Summer Game Fest, not Summer Music Fest, so it's painfully obvious as to what kind of news people will be tuning in to listen to when this event happens. And thanks to the recent Sonic Central Direct, people are just foaming at the mouth of Sonic news, including myself. I gotta tell you, this is a welcome change after that deafening silence from Sega in recent times. But at least now we know why they've been so silent about Sonic up until now. So, all is good again. Though I can't help but suspect that the recent leaks from French retailers like So Gamely and Replay Multimedia might have forced Sega's hand. I say it because, as exciting as it was, some of the announcements looked a little hastily thrown together, like at the last minute or so. This is especially noticeable when you watch the announcement clip for Sonic Colors Ultimate. In it, the quality of the footage didn't look quite as polished as you would expect from an HD remaster coming out in 2021. But then the Famitsu screenshots came out right after, showcasing significant step-ups in its visuals, along with other features being added in, so there's that. It looks to me like the Colors Ultimate footage we've seen during Sonic Central came from a much earlier build, whereas the Famitsu screenshots showcased a build that was far more complete. And then you have Sonic Origins, 
the next Sonic Collection title coming out next year that will contain all the classic games being repackaged again for like the millionth time. With two significant differences, however. The first of which is, Sonic 3 is finally back, baby. I don't think we've seen that game at a collection title since 2010, by which I'm referring to the Sonic Classic Collection that was playable on the Nintendo DS, for anyone wondering. And all the games will be in widescreen. Well, three of the games were already given widescreen releases. Specifically, Sonic 1 and 2 were the Retro Engine remakes in 2013, and the 2011 Steam release of Sonic CD. Sonic 3, on the other hand, got no such treatment. Aside from the Sonic & Knuckles collection, the Sonic Mega collection, and the Sonic Classic collection, the game never saw a re-release, let alone any updates that brought it more in line with the widescreen format that we've come to expect from our games today. Unless you want to count the fan-made Sonic 3 AIR or Angel Island Revisited, which provides exactly that, but we are talking about stuff made officially by Sega in this instance. Anyway, Sonic 3 never got blessed with a retro engine re-release unlike its sibling titles, and it also wasn't included among the Sega Ages collection, which would contain Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, or the Nintendo 3DS ports. There's quite a number of reasons for this, but we're going to save that discussion for another video that I'm working on. While the first Sonic Central Direct was pretty well executed all around, there were definitely a few eras where it looked like it was hastily thrown together. The rest, though, seemed to have been prepared well ahead of time. And now comes the Summer Game Fest, which will include a preview of the Sonic Symphony coming up on Sonic's birthday, and, from what I can gather of this trailer, a breakdown of the upcoming Sonic Colors Ultimate that is now only three months away from being in our hands. Perhaps they'll go into detail on the new Tails Faith mechanic that we've just been informed about, as well as the addition of a Jade Ghost Wisp. I have theories as to how both these mechanics will work, and you can learn what those theories are in one of my latest Sonic News videos talking about Tails in Sonic Colors Ultimate. Check that out if you haven't yet! And after seeing the Famitsu screenshots, I better see showcases of either Starlight Carnival or Aquarium Park at the Summer Game Fest. Make that happen! As for whether we'll hear more about the rest of what was announced at Sonic Central, namely the Sonic Origins Collection or the new game Sonic Rangers, I honestly would not get your hopes up. Judging by what was showcased to us in the last two weeks, I don't think they have anything ready to be showcased for either of those things. After Sonic Central happened, they re-uploaded the announcement in Trailer for Colors Ultimate, but not a word was said about Sonic Origins or Sonic Rangers, which is most perplexing. One other theory I have is that this push of Colors Ultimate was alleged simply to indicate the fact that Sonic News would be coming our way at the event. But considering that Colors Ultimate is already slated for a release date this year, that is not all that likely. So again, I strongly suggest tempering your expectations about our Sonic Rangers or Sonic Origins. Let's also remember that we're getting a two-part animated series based on Sonic Colors called Rise of the Wisp, which is being worked on by the man himself, Tyson Hess. In case you didn't know, Tyson Hess is the mastermind behind the opening cutscene for Sonic Mania, and the animated series to follow, Sonic Mania Adventures. He was also brought on board for Team Sonic Racing Overdrive, which accompanied the release of Team Sonic Racing in 2019. They are all of exceptional quality, and I recommend that you check this series out when it does go up. If we're lucky, we might even get to see the first episode in its entirety at the Summer Game Fest. But as of now, only a Summer 2021 release date was confirmed for it, so it's not clear if it will pop up this week or anytime soon. I have to wonder why exactly they chose Sweet Mountain as the setting for a Rise of the Wisp. Why not Starlight Carnival? Or Planet Wisp? Heck, I would've taken an Asteroid Coaster. Not that I'm throwing any shade towards Sweet Mountain, it's an awesome stage, it just isn't exactly among my favorites, but it's alright, the series will be great one way or the other. But given how talented Tyson Hess is, I would've been very curious to see how he brings Starlight Carnival to life. Anyway, when it comes to the Summer Game Fest, you can probably expect to hear more about Sonic Colors Ultimate, and definitely about the Sonic Symphony since we're getting a preview of it there. But as far as anything else, you should probably hold off on expecting it such until E3 happens, because that starts up two days after the Summer Game Fest kicks off, so you won't be left hanging for very long. Now, you may have noticed that I scheduled two live streams on this channel, 
One of them will be with Wednesday, where we play through all the Sonic Classic tiles in preparation of Sonic Origins coming out next year. And the other will be to celebrate Sonic Adventure 2's 20th anniversary next Friday. Yes, you heard me right. It's been 20 years since one of the most definitive Sonic games yet came out. Holy crap. 20 years. Amazing. And yes, you can expect similar streams concerning the Summer Game Fest and E3. It's about to be a crazy two weeks coming up. Now, before we close this video off, I want to turn our attention to something else entirely. Last Saturday, the leaker Zippo updated their blog again with yet another post, though it's mainly a summary of his thoughts about the Sonic Central Direct that happened recently, although it does bring up a theory that I wanted to highlight. I know people are understandably cautious about taking the predictions of leakers at face value. I myself am still cautious about doing as such. But the fact is, he's nailed with a handful of predictions so far, such as Sonic 3 being included in the upcoming Sonic Origins collection, and the fact that we're getting remasters. However, he didn't specifically name the code remaster up until it was actually revealed, so there is food for thought. Still, while I will not say that you should take everything Zippo said as fact just yet, credit must be given where it is due. In his latest blog post, he doesn't share any more inside information like what he did with previous posts. But, he does highlight something that I felt merited a discussion. You'll remember from my latest videos related to the recent flood of Sonic news that I referenced this poster that came up earlier this year. It has the tagline, Unstoppable for Generations, and also three different illustrations of Sonic from three different eras. You have Classic Sonic on the left, you have Modern Sonic on the right, and in the middle, you have what looks like Dreamcast Sonic drawn on the same art style that was Yuji Uokawa's signature style. This strongly suggested that elements of Dreamcast slash Adventure Sonic would be present this anniversary. Think about it. You have Classic Sonic for Sonic Origins, then you have Modern Sonic for the Color's Ultimate Remaster, and then you have a new Sonic game, where Sonic will apparently have shades of his Dreamcast slash Adventure design, as is especially noticeable in the style of his footwear, and the length of his quills. Now, it's too soon to draw conclusions on what sort of gameplay style we're going to see with Sonic Rangers or whatever the final product will be called if ever they decide to change the name. It certainly got me excited for what was to come. No offense to the Booth formula, but its well has run dry. It's time for something new. Now back to Zippo. Before concluding his blog post, he shared an observation that was partly similar to my own, but it also had a truckload of differences. Let's look back at the poster with the Unstoppable Generations tagline. Initially, I'd taken the modern Sonic render as a clue of the Code Ultimate Remaster, a clue that wound up being right under our nose without us ever realizing it for god knows how long. <laughs> but there was a crucial detail I missed that Zippo was much wiser to. Looking back at this very brief teaser of Sonic Rangers, you'll remember the trail of energy Sonic was leaving behind as he ran through the forest. Sonic always had a tendency to cut into the air with lines of blue wherever he ran, but there was some noticeable edit to this aura. And in other games like Sonic Cut Ultimate coming out, we see similar edits to the after effects of his insane speed. Although it seemed that in the case of Cut Ultimate, you'll need to pre-order it to enjoy that benefit. But one thing I managed to overlook up until now were the visual effects of Sonic's movement in the poster itself. Let's take a look again at the modern Sonic render on the poster. Do you see those lines of blue all around his body? That looks awfully similar to something else that we've seen before. Something like... oh I don't know... the aura on his body in Sonic Rangers? Suddenly I'm feeling really stupid for not having observed this before, but in my defense my mind was already locked on the idea of modern Sonic representing Colors Ultimate rather than Sonic Ranger, so... I never stopped to think about the lines of blue you see all around his body on the poster. And yet, the similarities are unmistakable. You can also see on the poster that the length of modern Sonic's shoe has also been increased to the similar proportion seen in the trailer. Same for his quills, by the way. But, if modern Sonic is meant to represent Sonic Rangers, then what's up with Dreamcast Sonic in the middle of the poster? Like, what's going on here? Initially, I taken the inclusion of Dreamcast or Adventure Sonic as a sign that his design of Sonic Rangers would be inspired by his adventure days. You can see from the Sonic in the middle that he does have a design choices, 
but they're a lot more exaggerated for Masonic on the right now that I'm taking another look at it. So it seemed my initial theory wasn't quite as spot on as I previously thought, but it did still have some validity, at least about classic Sonic and Sonic Origins. But, if a Sonic on the right is meant to represent Sonic Rangers, what's up with a Sonic in the middle? Is he meant to be a clue of another Sonic game coming out that Sega never said a word about during Sonic Central? Or could this be a sign that his Dreamcast or Adventure design will find its way onto some Sonic merchandise coming up? In Zippo's very first post he made back in February, he suggests that Sega has come to the decision to no longer blend the 2D and 3D game playstyles of Sonic into one title, such as the likes of Sonic Colors, Generations, and Forces. Instead, they will be kept solely to their respective dimensions for future releases. So far, everything we've seen in the first Sonic Central two weeks ago suggests that this is accurate. Think about it. We have Sonic Origins, which is purely 2D, and when you discount Coast Ultimate, which is a hybrid title, you then have Sonic Rangers, which, from the looks of his teaser, is going to be a full-on 3D open-world game. I cannot imagine anything about the game being 2D in any way, just from looking at it. But when it comes to Sonic Origins, I might be falling into the same trap I fell into when I mistakenly assumed that modern Sonic was meant to represent Coast Ultimate. Coast Ultimate and Sonic Origins are for all intents and purposes re-releases. And for this poster to include three different designs of Sonic, this must suggest that along with the remastered content, they're going all in on new games built specifically for 2D and 3D styles of gameplay kept separate from one another. Now, Classic Sonic might still well be representative of Sonic Origins, I'm not doubting that, but if this trend continues, then maybe the Sonic in the middle is meant to be a clue about another game coming up. I don't want to get my hopes too high, of course, but if there is, in fact, another new game aside from Sonic Rangers that's in development, it would even things out. You'd have two re-released games, and yes, I'm counting Sonic Origins as one game to make things easier, and then you'd have two new games to go along with it. If this theory holds up, then this could be one of Sonic's most action-packed anniversaries yet. But the fact that Sonic Central disclosed details about three games in total, as opposed to four, suggests to me that the idea of a fourth game is not looking likely to materialize. At the very least, they were able to work up a quick teaser for Sonic Rangers, but no such luck was had for this supposed new other game that we're hoping for. But, Sega did say they had more announcements coming up for us throughout the year. So as such, don't put this idea away just yet. There may be a lot more we haven't heard about. One way or another, this is definitely going to be an interesting summer season for the Blue Hedgehog. As frustrating as it can be to have more questions than answers, it's also pretty exciting to note that we have new content to discuss for Sonic. The recent drop for Sonic, at least as far as the mainline console games are concerned, seems to finally be at an end. So to summarize, strong signs are pointing towards more Sonic news coming up at the Summer Game Fest this Thursday, and we can most likely expect a similar event out of E3, which is happening from June 12th to the 15th, starting this Saturday. With that guys, that wraps it up my next Sonic news video, so what do you think we'll be hearing about regarding Sonic this week and next week? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, drop those likes and consider subscribing and ringing that bell so y'all don't miss out on anything. I will be following everything that goes on for Sonic's 30th anniversary very closely, so definitely stick around this channel if you're as excited as I am. And as well, I regularly post walkthroughs of the Sonic game, showcases of merchandise, basically anything that has to do with Sonic you can expect to see on this channel. If there's a Sonic game that you're struggling to play, chances are I might have some tips for you, so maybe look through my videos and you might find something that will help you. I regularly drop new videos at 9am central time every day, but I may post more than once in a day if the circumstances warrant as such, like today for one, so look out for that. Anyway guys, I'll see y'all next time, take care, and don't forget, blue blurs for life. See you later.